All right. <laughs> Christ following, we've been talking about that, right? Uh, now we're going to transition into some dangerous uh, witness. Betty Brewer's number. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> dangerous witness, right? Uh, we've been uh, going after this for a while. We've defined it. We've, we're looking at it. But we have some work to do. I don't mean that in a bad way, but just some, some trends, right? Uh, even in RUN, one of the things that stayed the same and actually maybe went a little bit lower still was um, I often pray for people and look for opportunities to share my story. That's often maybe what we think about with Dangerous Witness. There's so much more to that, but that's one of the things that we measure in that way. I wonder how that looks for you. We, I said earlier today that if we are serious about his kingdom and his will, we will commit to truly knowing him, helping our groups know him, talking about Jesus, but we can't stop there. I think we've made the case for that, that our growing works best as we're going because when you understand who Jesus is and you are saturated with him, you can't help but help others come to know this same Jesus. And that's what we're going to get into. If we are to be irresistible small groups, we must not just know him, but we must make him known. That's a simple way to say that. I mentioned earlier a guy by the name of Jeff Vanderstelt. The book is Saturate. And I'm just going to read this quote because I think it sets the stage for what we're going to go through over the next little segment here. Jesus wants us to live a life fully for his glory in the world, every part and every person. Jesus didn't live, serve, suffer, and die so that we could just attend Christian events and services. He lived and died so we could become his people who are, here this part, sent into every part of the world on his behalf. He wants all people everywhere to see and know about him. And he wants everyone to know that everything is to be done for his glory. I'll add to that, that if we are serious about his kingdom, then we will need to find ways to see our time, our money, our unique abilities as means to serve all people everywhere in any way possible, big or small. In God's kingdom, all life counts and everybody matters. We could stop there, but there's probably more. So here's the second main point that I'm going to give you today. If we are serious about his kingdom and his will, we will commit to truly knowing his people. Keyword, his people. Not just the people that we know or that we feel comfortable with, but his people. If we believe Jesus is who he says he is, then he's created all people in his image, then everybody that we come across are his people. That might feel daunting, but really it's simple. When I interact with Tom, it's him. That's who Jesus wants me to interact with. If I'm interacting with Rebecca, Rebecca is his. That's the person I need to work with. If you're interacting with somebody within your group, they call you up or they text you. That's the person. If you're at the grocery store and you're checking out and you're, oh, I got to get somewhere. That person who's checking you out, that's the person. That's his person that we're called to be serious about. A quick book, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later. This is actually a great study for your groups to go through. It's one of the three that we're recommending that you take a look at this spring and the summer. It's called Surprise the World, Michael Frost. And he's talking about what does it look like for our groups to be irresistible. But he's saying there are five easy habits that our groups could do on a day in and day out basis that will make Jesus known. Very tangible things like invite somebody to eat dinner with you. That's purposeful, intentional. We live in a, com- in a community in a world that isn't that hospitable anymore. That There's a distance That's farther than house to house. There's something that feels like a bigger gap there. What does it look like to invite somebody in in those ways? Uh, He would say this, that all of us are to live generous, hospitable, spirit-led, Jesus-focused lives in our everyday. He also likens all of us to an army of ordinary people. There's some power in the word army, right? Right? There's some identity in the understanding of ordinary people. Any one of us with God's strength is capable of making him known to the people around us. Uh, back to the Saturate book, uh, Vanderstelt would say, God loves to use normal people. Sorry, Bloomington people. Bad joke. But normal people and Bloomington people in everyday stuff of life. He wants everyone involved in all of their lives. I just cracked myself up. Okay. <laughs> 
Mike Baker, our senior pastor, says this all the time. Our first and best witness is the life we live. Day in, day out, every day, anybody, anywhere. You guys are getting it, right? As I look across this room, I see literally hundreds of people that we represent. You know, we might have, what, 85, maybe 100 people in here, but we represent three times as many, maybe four times as many people from a touch standpoint. Think about if we understand this idea of an army of ordinary people. Think about this community. Think about how irresistible we can make Jesus be just by how we live. We do it in a lot of different ways. We can do it through serving. That's ridiculous love. We can do it through speaking, giving testimony to who Jesus is. That's dangerous witness. But we can demonstrate a genuine love and help people fully belong. Because at the end of the day, we all want to know that people know us. That we belong to something. That we belong to people. That we have an identity bigger than ourselves. And we have the best person for that. His name is Jesus. What does it look like for us to be irresistible and let people know in that way? If you want to, you can turn with me to Colossians 4, 2 through 6. I, this is not original work. This is actually from the book of um, Frost, The Surprise, Surprise of the World. But real quickly... I'm going to read this, and there's a couple things for us. So Colossians 4, 2 through 6. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the world to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Now, there's two things happening at once here. Real quickly, this takes more time to unpack than what um, I have for today. But some of us get tripped up because we're like, well, I don't have the gift of evangelism. I'm not an evangelist. Um, and it's true. Some of us don't have that gift right? There are specific people within this room that have a gift and a burden that they must speak about Jesus to any and everybody around them. And that's good, and that's great, and that's holy. And that's, we see that in here. In verse uh, three, at the same time, pray also for us. So Paul's talking about a smaller group of people, us, right? That we may have open doors to declare. That's the speaking of the mystery, Right? He's asking for prayer to do the gifts that he's been given to do. And then there's the bigger side of that too. He, the all of us. Because if you don't have that gift or if somebody says you don't have that gift, you're not off the hook. Right? It's about how we live. Remember, Mike, our first and best witness is the life that we live. And so there's instruction for all of the rest of us. Continue, continue to steadfastly pray. That's for all of us. We pray with purpose. We pray asking, God, who's the person that I'm going to interact with today that you want me to see them as you see them? Or that you want me to ask them a question or that you want me to actually listen and take the time. We pray with purpose. We pay attention. We're watchful. This is from Colossians. We're being watchful for what God is doing around us. We walk with outsiders. That's a really harsh word in our culture, but it literally means those that just don't know Christ yet. Who are you walking with right now that's outside of Jesus? And then he says, actively use your time, being intentional. How are you intentional to make Jesus known in your everyday? And then here's a way to do it. Speak carefully, speak lovingly, but speak invitingly. That's irresistible. Live your life in such a way that if you actually use words, you're irresistible. But however you do it, you're inviting somebody in to make Jesus known. Because if we're serious about his kingdom, then we will commit to truly knowing his people. Now, I'm treading lightly a little bit on this because tomorrow Mike's going to be talking about Dangerous Witness. And he's going to introduce something. He's going to challenge our entire church. So you guys get a sneak peek. I did ask permission if I could share this. He said, go right ahead. He says he loves you, by the way, and that he prayed for this snow today. So anyway, uh, but he, among other things, he's going to talk about Uh, Three people, three places, three invites. Our whole church is going to be challenged to do this between now and April when Easter comes along. So real quickly, who are three people in your life that may not know Jesus? 
All right? And he's going to challenge us to pray for them. And then in part of that prayer is an active, intentional ask for God to provide an opportunity for you to speak with them and to interact with them and to live life with them. So who are the three people that may not know Jesus? The second is, what are three places in this community where you could go and interact with people who may or may not know Jesus? All right, if, if we had more time, I'd talk about this idea of a third place. We have our primary places, you know, work, home, maybe Eastview is a part of that because we're pretty involved. Uh, I mean, you guys came here today, so you're, you're committed, right? But there are other places, just basically called a third place. Maybe it's a coffee shop. Maybe it's a workout place. Maybe it's a favorite grocery store that you go to or whatever it is. There are places that we naturally gravitate towards. It could be a sporting event and there are people there. So who are those people? That's the idea of a place. What's a third place that you can uh, intentively pay attention and pray for folks and, ha and have interactions? And then the three invites is we're going to be in challenge to invite those three people into one of two things. Mike's going to say, bring them to Sunday service, bring them to Easter, invite them to Easter Sunday. It's an easy ask because most people want to go to church once or twice a year at least, maybe more. But you can also, as the small groups pastor, I'm going to add to this, you can invite them into your community, into your life. You can invite them into what you know to be true about who Jesus is. So I, don't, I, I did ask for, for permission to make that invite as well, and I got the go ahead. Mike's awesome. He loves groups. So three people, three places, three invites, more on that. Uh, later on but here's the question for us how can we how can our groups be irresistible and make Jesus known in the world around us we don't need to overthink this we literally just need to figure out the people and places that we already intentionally interact with and then just pray and ask God to be bold in, in our midst I'm gonna leave you with a, a few questions who can you purposely pray for how can your group walk with others outside of your group? How can you actively use your small group time to make Jesus known outside of your group? How can you lovingly care for others that demonstrates and provides an irresistible invitation both into your group and into Eastview? If we do those things, if we're serious about those things, then we have connected going with growing. We are activating what we're learning about Jesus if we simply pray and say, God, who do you have for me to talk to today? Oh. Again. <laughs> Apparently junior hires can't write very fast. Just kidding. <laughs> who can you purposely pray for? <laughs> How can your group walk with others outside of your group? How can you actively use your small group time well to make Jesus known? How can you lovingly care for others in a way that provides an irresistible invitation for them into your group or into Eastview? Is that better? Okay, good. If we're serious about his kingdom and his will, we will commit to making him known in our everyday. Amen?